Welcome to Trig Day 2 Notes. Today we're going to be tackling word problems. But before we actually launch into word problems, I want to talk about some of the vocabulary that you're going to encounter today. So let's begin by talking about an angle of elevation. An angle of elevation is simply an angle that is from the horizontal, so from horizontal, and then goes up. Okay, like an elevator goes up. So if I were to draw it, it would look something like this. There's my horizontal, and there's my angle of elevation. It comes from the horizontal and goes up. An example of this in a word problem would be like the sun is uh, 23 meters above the horizon, or 23 degrees above the horizon. Right? That would be the sun's angle of elevation because it's from the horizontal up. Now, by contrast, an angle of depression is from a horizontal down. So from horizontal down. In this case, you're usually someplace up in the air, and you've got a horizontal, and then you go down from there. So uh, this is the one students get wrong most often. This would be like you're in a blimp hovering above a stadium, and your angle of depression is 32 degrees, right? So it would be from the horizontal line of sight of the blimp down. And then the last one I want to mention is grade. <clears throat> this is always expressed as a percent, and it's simply rise over run. So for example, if a truck is driving up a road that has a 10% grade, that means it's a grade of 10 over 100. So if I were to draw my uh, triangle, there's my run, that's 100. There's my rise, it's 10. And this would be the right triangle that I would form. So it would be a run of 100 and a rise of 10. And that's all that a 10% grade means. And my little truck guy, he's driving up this incline. All right, so let's actually tackle some word problems. The key to a word problem is drawing the correct picture. Really, that's, that's the key. And every single one is going to start with a right triangle of these word problems that we're going to solve with TRIG. So I have a building. It casts a 23 meter long shadow with an angle of elevation of 54 degrees. All right, so I have a building. It has a shadow and there is an angle of elevation from the horizontal up. So here is my right angle, here is my building, I need to find the height of it, so that's going to be my x. The shadow is 23 meters long, and my angle of elevation is 54 degrees, the one that is from the horizontal up. Once you've drawn your triangle, <clears throat> then it's just a matter of doing the trig that we did yesterday. We've got opposite and adjacent, which means we are dealing with tangent. So the tangent of 54 degrees is equal to my opposite over my adjacent. There's my trig ratio. My calculator ready ratio would be that x equals 23 times the tangent of 54. When I plug that into my calculator, I get 32 meters. Now it's really important that you give your answer both with units and in the format that it's asked for. So to the nearest meter means that I go 32 meters. Okay, so really the keys are drawing your scenario correctly and then putting your answer in the correct format. The trig part after the previous notes you should have down no problem. All right, let's move on to the next problem. I have a 5 meter vertical pole. So there's my vertical pole. It casts an 8 meter shadow. And it wants to know what is the angle of elevation. So I draw my right triangle. It's a 5 meter pole, 8 meter shadow. And what is the angle of elevation? So the thing that I'm looking for is the angle. Yet again, I have opposite and adjacent. You'll notice that tangent appears a lot in word problems. So opposite and adjacent, tangent of x is equal to my opposite over my adjacent. This time I'm looking for the angle, so I'm going to use the inverse. 
x equals the inverse tangent of my opposite over my adjacent, which means that, and again, I'm going to the nearest degree, so that means that x equals 32 degrees. Pretty straightforward. So I mentioned that we always use tangent pretty much in word problems. The major exception to that rule is when there's anything that involves string. So a kite, a paraglider, something like that, then we're probably going to use something other than tangent because the string is going to be involved and the string is always the hypotenuse. So we've got a kite. Here's my kite up here. Ooh, that's a terrible kite. String. It's flying at an angle of 42 degrees with the ground. So this is 42 degrees. All 70 meters of the string have been let out. That would be my hypotenuse. Um, we need to find the height of the kite to the nearest 10 meters. So keep that in mind. All right. So I've got, from the perspective of my angle, I have my opposite and I have my hypotenuse. So this time I am dealing with sine. The sine of 42 degrees equals my opposite over my hypotenuse. So my calculator ready ratio is x equals 70 times the sine of 42. I go ahead and type that into my calculator and 46.8 meters, but to the nearest 10, uh, 46.8 is closer to 50 than it is to 40, so we're going with 50 meters. As simple as that. All right, I would like you to work this next problem with Martha and her daughter, and I need to know um, <clears throat> how long Martha's shadow is, how long her daughter's shadow is, and then what the difference between them is. So go ahead and work this problem, draw your triangles, write out your ratios, and then give me your answers. Come back and check when you've got answers. Hit pause now. So your final answer should be that Heidi cast a longer shadow by 27 inches. Um, I set up two triangles, one for Martha, one for Heidi. In both cases, I use tangent. And since the shadow was the thing we wanted to know and shadow is adjacent, it would be on the bottom of our ratio, which meant we would have to do division. So Martha's shadow wound up being about 12 inches, and Heidi's shadow wound up being about 39 inches. That makes sense because the higher the sun is, the shorter your shadow is, right? We can you know, kind of check that by taking some real-world knowledge with us there. Great. Moving on. Okay, so a truck drives up a 30-meter incline, and the angle is 23, and we want to know how high vertically the truck rows. So once again, we're going to draw our picture. So there's my incline. Now you get to see my drawing skills. Here's my truck. Here's the cab. It's got little wheels. He's driving up his incline. All right, the incline is 30 meters. And the angle is 23 degrees, and we want to know how high vertically the truck went. So this is what we're looking for. All right, opposite hypotenuse, we are talking sine. Sine 23 equals my opposite over my hypotenuse. So please tell me what x equals. Come back and check when you have your answer. Hit pause now. And you should have gotten that x equals 12 meters to the nearest meter. Very straightforward. All right, let's talk about this next problem. This one always gets me because I always get confused when drawing the picture. So we've got a distance from point A on the shore of a lake to point B on an island, and then there's point P somewhere. And PAB, so angle A, angle A here, the middle angle, measures 62 degrees. Angle P measures 28 degrees, which means that angle B must measure 90 degrees. All right, so we do have a right triangle. Let's go ahead and draw the picture. I used to get confused by this because I would try to draw the lake and the island, and I would always do it wrong. So sometimes these pictures are a lot simpler if all you do is draw the right triangle. So there's point B. Um, point A is 62, and point P is 28. 
and it says that PA is 350 meters, so find AB, find X. Now, you've got a choice here because you know both angles, you can either look at it from the perspective of angle P, in which case you have the opposite and the hypotenuse, or from the perspective of angle A, in which case you have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. Whichever one you want to do, please do now and tell me what the measure of AB is. So come back when you have an answer, hit pause now. And you should have gotten that AB equals 164 meters, no matter which method you use. How are we doing? Good, I hope. Now we come to my favorite problem. Find the length of the shortest diagonal of a regular pentagon with a side length of 10 inches, round to the nearest tenth. All right, so we got a regular pentagon going on here. So let's draw that guy. So there's my regular pentagon. And it says length of the shortest diagonal. Well, all the diagonals are the same length if it's a regular pentagon. So we're just going to ignore the fact that this is shortest. So I'll just draw a diagonal. So there's a diagonal. And then I know my pentagon has a side length of 10 inches. I want you, right now, to pause this and to think about how you would go about solving this problem. Come up with a method for solving it and come back when you think you know how. Hit pause now. Okay, so the key to this problem is to form a right triangle, right? We can't do trig unless we have a right triangle. So basically you want to draw a second line that splits this diagonal into two congruent parts and furthermore forms a right triangle. So now we have a right triangle and we know one of the sides. That's fabulous, but what we really need to know also is one of the angles. So we are going to find this angle right here. How do I find that angle? Well, it's half of this whole angle. How do I find this angle if you said n minus 2 times 180 divided by n, then you are right. So in this case, n is 5. So I take 5 minus 2 times 180 and divide it by 5, and I get 108 degrees, which means that this angle right here is 54 degrees. It is half that because this bisects that angle. All right, so now we're in business. Now what I really want to know is I want to know what this is because I need to know the whole uh, length of the diagonal. So from the perspective of my angle, I have opposite and I have hypotenuse, so I am dealing with sine. The sine of 54 degrees equals my opposite over my hypotenuse. Calculator ready, x equals 10 sine 54. My instructions tell me to round to the nearest tenth, so when I solve this, I need to be keeping that in mind, and I get x equals 8.1, which means that my diagonal is twice that, so my diagonal is 16.2, and that would be in inches. So there's my final answer. Please make sure you know how to do that problem. As far as question 8 goes, it's pretty straightforward. We've already talked about what grade means, so I would like you to solve this problem for me in the notes check.